Good afternoon, everyone. Andy Jacob here with the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. We have a fantastic show today. I've been waiting to get Mr. Adrian Mose on the fo- on the show, on the phone, on the Zoom. I'm so excited. I, I forgot where I was for a minute uh, to talk about Equilibrium. And he's got an amazing company. He is an expert at product design and software development. He is really, really super engaged with digital strategy, user experience design, technology and integrations. What he's doing at Equilibrium is really amazing. I actually call him the king of product design and software development. And I'm so happy to have Adrian, the CEO and founder of Equilibrium on the show. Adrian, thanks so much for coming on the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. Hey, Andy, I'm delighted to be here to represent Equilibrium and to share a bit about our story. Thank you for this having is, me. You're welcome. And this is super exciting. I've been trying to get you on the show for a number of months. And thank you so much for cutting some time out. You have such incredible case studies on your website. You do such great work for so many international companies. Before we get into it all, Let's pull the lens back to 30,000 feet and tell us about Equilibrium. For sure. It'd be my pleasure. I started Equilibrium nine years ago, so we had the opportunity to celebrate our ninth anniversary just a few weeks ago. Um, Coming in for over 20 years of experience building digital experiences across different continents and for some of the largest brands in the world, um, I thought there is an opportunity to start fresh and bring in business agility, craftsmanship, speed into a new organization. Personally, I'm really passionate about this concept of balance. So equilibrium sounded like the right name for me because of the balance between craftsmanship and speed, between technology and experience, between agility and thoughtfulness. So our mandate, our purpose, what you get excited about coming to work every day, it's about crafting remarkable experiences which enrich people's life. We want to solve complex business problems and make an impact, leave the world better. I love it. I love it, Adrian, so much. And you and I both know that technology, the technology world is really moving very, very rapidly. And if you don't match the pace of your consumer's needs, your business just won't keep up. So let's talk about that a little bit, because I know that's one of your uh, guiding missions is to make sure that you create harmony out of this chaotic nature uh, of the industry. So let's talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. We feel like data is the fuel for this digital economy. And um, we also saw... Research from McKinsey showing that in this, since the pandemic has started just you know, over a year or so, we have seen about six years of acceleration of the adoption of digital products and services. Companies who had digital somewhere on their roadmap, they had to get digital to survive. So technology is used to create these amazing experiences for both customers, but also for their staff. So Equilibrium puts together strategy, design, and technology to build these remarkable experiences for our clients, but also for our own staff. And how we do this is by bringing together amazing experts, professionals from all over the world who have this passion about craftsmanship, who want to put their domain expertise to complement and extend the team's from the client to accelerate the speed to value and to market. That's unbelievable. And it makes all the sense in the world as, and as consultants at Equilibrium and agile technologists, you really understand the challenge of getting uh, a company, getting their vision to market quickly. So let's talk about that. Where did that come from? You understanding how to help companies get to market very, very quickly in a very streamlined, organized way. Love that question. And and how you ask about, not just about technology, but also about having a purpose and a strategy. 
So really right now, what we see is that experience is the product. Um, in whatever business you are in, customers are looking for these personalized, tailored experiences. And technology is an enabler. So what we do is we work with organizations to understand what is their business strategy. How do they want to advance? They may be like, what brought them here is no longer what is going to bring them there. So how is this technology revolution going to create opportunities for them to both grow and differentiate? So we start with the business strategy and then work with the client in this tailored uh, strategy engagements to craft a digital strategy, not just let's just get the platform out, but also what is the purpose of technology? How can it be from looking for ways to automate and cut costs to be instead a driver for growth and differentiation? Once we have the digital strategy aligned to the business strategy, then we create the digital operating model that looks into how we bring the various vendors, the various platforms together to accelerate speed to market, reduce risk on the implementation and integration. And what we do to differentiate is this perfect balance, right? Equilibrium between strategy, technology, and design. We are looking to, we're bringing our own experts to complement and extend the teams from our customers. Some customers, have a very clear solution defined. I know what I'm trying to achieve. I just need speed to market because it's crucial to prevent the competitors to step into that space or because this is going to unlock new value for their customers and, and new, and new uh, business opportunities. Other clients, however, are looking for, we have these assets internally, we're sitting on this data, Technology is moving, customer separation are changing. How might we evolve our business for the future? How we not only future-proof our business or increase our resilience, but actually innovate and prosper and grow. So we engage with them in ideation sessions, sessions that focus on design thinking and system thinking. What assets do you have? How do you use data today? How might we enhance the life of your customers. And sometimes we are these customers. So for example, we chose to work in financial services because we look at research, which show that money is the number one stressor in people's life. So we thought like by partnering with this progressive organization and changing people's relationship with money, we will make such a difference in people's life. And think about it during the pandemic, digital has become the main, if not the only channel to interact with, with your customers. We see a number of institutions, offices, branches have been actually closed. All this interaction have moved to digital. So we help customers to deal with this expanded flux of digital interaction. We saw some of them having 40% increased interaction just in a few months. But they also looking to put out new services to adapt to COVID but some of them will persist beyond and above to enable people, for example, from the safety of their homes to cash their checks, the government supports to pay for their kids' tuition, to pay for their mortgage. So all this transaction right now can be done digitally and in a manner that's both safe, secure, and from the convenience of your home anytime and on any device. I love it, Adrian. It makes all the sense in the world the way you explain it, as only you can explain it because you have such an expertise with over, with over two decades of very diverse and progressive experience. You've worked with top brands. You have a track record of delivering world-class projects. And, you know, you, you're really positioned with your team to continue to grow equilibrium. Let's talk a little bit, Adrian, about what is your perfect customer? Do you, do you like working with startups? Do you work with companies that are a little bit more mature? Do you, walk, do you work with leading brands in Fortune 100 and 1,000 companies? What's the perfect company for Adrian Mo, uh, Mo, Moise uh, and Equilibrium to help? I have the question, Andy. We actually have a diverse set of organizations. So for example, we work with large organizations in a number of ways. One is sometimes in a large organization, they may be entrepreneur. 
people who start from scratch to build a business within a larger business. They have small resources that they can tap in. They need to prove that the new products and services they are thinking about will actually be a fit to market. So we talk to them about proving that, is this a viable business? Is it feasible? Is it desirable by your customers? Because the risk of building and they will come, what if they don't come? So we work with some of these organization to help them innovate, build a culture of experimentation. The other thing is, once we have figured out what we need to build, or the company had already a clear goal of, we want to achieve this, acceleration and risk reduction is what we provide. We basically bring experts to help them achieve speed to market. And especially in this regulated environment in which data, privacy, uh, security is, is so important. Think about financial services, think about healthcare, think about e-commerce. So definitely large enterprise client working on this complex project, they need the subject matter expertise. They need this expertise around the industry, about the platform and about technology like cloud and mobile. But we also like to, we are geeks ourselves. We like to innovate. We run internal innovation initiative for asset equilibrium. We're interested in chatbots. We're interested in, in um, virtual reality and augmenting reality. We are interested in about the IoT of things and what will, opportunities will be unlocked through the release of the 5G functionality. But also working with well-funded startups, organizations who have these ideas about unbelievable products. And they may start with like back of a napkin vision. And we help them shape that vision, prove, you know, using things such as rapid prototyping and Google design things to validate that that idea actually have legs and can be implemented. And we understand it's a feasible business model, working with them on the payment strategy, monetization, then helping them to create what we often call the minimal viable product. What's the minimum functionality we can build together that will validate that particular idea has legs and will generate interest among the users. In oh, any instance, risk reduction and speed to market acceleration is among these things that the clients appreciate working with us. I love it so much, Adrian. You really have done a phenomenal job. You know, you hold a PhD in computer science. Uh, you, you have a master's in computer engineering from uh, the University of Bucharest. You know, you were a former lead de uh, game developer and technical architect that converted to program and client management. You've got such a great background. You've been able to establish partnerships between industry and academia. So much is going on with you and so much is going on at Equilibrium. Let's talk a little bit about this MVP, this minimal viable product. That seems to me to be a real sweet spot because what you've shown on your website with some of your case studies is you're able to get those up very quickly and very efficiently. Why is it so important to get that MVP up so quickly for your clients? For several reasons. So one is, again, we wanna assess that there is a, what is called a market fit. This new product is oftentimes not a matter, I have the solution here, it's building red, now create the blue copy of that. It's, it's solving a, a gap that nobody else has seen or addressed in that particular way. So it is really about innovation. And when you have innovation, you also have risk. Risk that, you know, the customers may not interpret the business value that you are envisioning in that way. And sometimes you actually need to pivot. We saw billion dollar businesses, we started with certain vision and then when they put it in front of the customer, customers say like, oh, uh, I like that, but I actually think I like to use this product this way. So as opposed to finding the feedback from the customers, they adapted, they embraced that. And then they accelerated the speed to market. So what he meant is, one is there is the concept of fail fast. You don't want to come up with a bunch of hypotheses and, and kind of get stuck in your own mind feeling like I'm so excited about my product, I'm going to just build these things without testing, are your customers on board? And we have to realize that initially, it may be something called the early adopters that you need to win. People who will become ambassadors for the brand. Other people will be, especially if you produce 
um, software for the enterprise market, they are not really the risk takers. They want to see that you have traction. You, you want to see that some other organization have adopting those products and you are on the kings. So by the time they embrace it, they're not going to step up in a bunch of land miles. Oh my God, what happened here? You expect somebody else to have resolved those issues. So with this minimal viable product, we do the following. We basically look into for these ideas that you have and for these particular customers, what is the minimum experiment, minimum set of functionality that will validate if your idea is correct? And we, it's not, doesn't mean we, we stop working after we build this prototype, which typically it's about three or four months or so very fast. We build this high quality applications for web, mobile, or internet of things. And we actually put them in the hands of our customers and let them use that and use things such as instrumentation and other sources of information to check to see how are the customers patterns of using this technology matching our ideas? What ideas they love and embrace? Let's double down on that. And we're gonna see some, some of the features and functionality, they, they are totally not responding to those. So then that allows us to, as opposed to spending more time and money on stuff we believe is needed, we let the customer provide that feedback so we can focus our efforts and minimize the amount of rework I love it. It really makes all the sense in the world. It's such a well thought out plan. You mentioned failing fast. Let's talk about that and why that's so important on the MVP model. Absolutely. So part of this ideation process, we know that, for example, building this rapid interactive prototypes, which can be very high fidelity. If it's a mobile app, it will look and behave like a really well-functioning, integrated, cloud-enabled application. But in reality, you have only coded a number of journeys, a number of interactions. And because we do not do the end-to-end -end integration, we just implement the customer experience if you want the front end. It's like going to Ikea and you see like, oh, this is how a bathroom will look like or my kitchen or my bedroom. I really don't have any plumbing. You won't be able to cook in there, but it makes you feel, get a really good sense. Yeah, I can see myself living in a space like that. So we create this very uh, realistic experiments in a very short amount of time. And then we run usability studies to figure out how are the clients, the customers reacting to our hypothesis. Are they enjoying those experiences? Can they figure out what's the next step for them to advance towards achieving their, their, their goals? I love it, Adrian. It's really fantastic. Now let's talk about the user experience because you get companies that come to you and they say, hey, Adrian, we want some help. We've heard about your background. Uh, you know, you came referred. We know that you've done these amazing you know, uh, developments in product design and software development, and we want to use equilibrium. And they start talking to you about their technology. How often does the founder forget that the most important thing is really the customer on the other end of the totally. technology? Let's talk about that a little bit. It's becoming increasingly important, you know, and we see ev everywhere up to the CEOs, they all understand that really uh, they are the chief experience officer. They are basically building customer centricity in all the products and services. So that's why we do this rapid prototyping to figure out in the end of the day, we know we can get the technology behind these prototypes right. The part that we need to prove is, is this the type of product and services people will enjoy? And are these type of journeys, this type of experiences making sense for them? Think about it. Nobody's really interested in getting a mortgage. I want to have a house. I want to put my family into a safe environment and I don't happen to have enough money and I'm going to need to sort of borrow some money. So mortgage is not my final outcome. Owning a home is my final outcome. So how can I support you in your process about figuring out how do you get that home, the right home for you? Can you afford it? Can you pay? What are some of these implications for that? So understanding what the true needs of the customers are it's what builds this remarkable experience for our clients and reduces the amount of customer frustration and, and, and rework. You mentioned balance and how my degree is in computer science. 
My PhD is in computer science, but the focus is on human computer action and usability. That balance we're discussing at the beginning between strategy, experience, and technology that I have embraced personally, I wanted to translate it in the culture of the equilibrium and then share that with our customers. And they also value this um, cultural contribution that we have because we have the opportunity working with so many clients to detect and extract some of these best practices from them. And then we actually co-create products and services that are more rewarding whatever we create together better than any of us doing this by ourselves because we use co-creation and co-elevation to accelerate speed to market and create this tailored solution that really adapt to the company's culture and the level of digital maturity. Wow. Well, for the people watching the show, you know why I was so excited to have Adrian come on the show. When you listen to him, you know, he really understands the balance. He understands the journey and he's really concerned about the experiences of the user. And when you combine those three things, you get a perfect symphony that really works beautifully for his clients. So congratulations on that, Adrian. Now, I know, Adrian, also that you do some mentoring at the SFU School of Interactive Arts and Technology. So I wanted to talk about entrepreneurship. And this leads me to my next question. For younger entrepreneurs watching the show, how important is for them to find a mentor? Uh, I think it's very important. I had the privilege, for example, when I was doing my PhD to uh, be involved in industry um, led projects. So my research wasn't just abstract research. Let's just do some fast algorithm and, and just publish some papers. It was meant to create these experiences that industry can apply. So it touches user and, and, and basically makes the, their lives better. And I wanted to give back. So, and I'm involved, for example, in business students competition. Just yesterday, I was involved in the Nactus um, Canada-wide competition for students, entrepreneurs. They presented their business and I was delighted to see um, students, graduate students, and the type of ideas and, and the early successes they have. It's inspiring to see this new generation that feels empowered and, and they unleash their potential. My daughter, she has just completed her first year at uh, Berkeley, and she is already two times entrepreneur. Um, so, so some of people are thinking about, well, there is these two categories. One is these... Um, uh, young geniuses, and then the seasoned masters. I am wasn't the young genius um, type. I, I focus on building these experiences, as you said, getting my PhD, working on different continents, doing both technology and user experience, and running uh, agile um, delivery teams, and then brought that experience into equilibrium so we can help our customer elevate the digital quotidian and help them operate digitally more efficiently and more rewarding. Wow, it's, that's awesome. Now, many people may already know this about you, but as a former lead game developer, uh, you know, in your past and someone that, you know, has, has been a leader in that arena for a long time, I wanted to have a little fun now and ask you, Adrian, what do you think is the next evolution or revolution, if you will, of the gaming uh, field? Where is gaming going? You know, we have a lot of younger entrepreneurs that, you know, grew up with the gaming industry and they're always saying, hey, you know, let's get a game around. Let's get a, a thought leader about gaming on so they could tell us what the future beholds. But in your mind, Adrian, what's going to be the next sort of revolution or evolution of gaming? Yeah, I just read um book for our Mr. Iwata, the former president of Nintendo. And I, on the cover, he has this personal quote, something along the lines of my business card says I'm a corporate, you know, CEO. Um, at, my background is that of a game developer, but in my heart, I am a gamer. I feel like this describes me too, because I am right now still enjoying amazing experiences on different platforms. And what I love right now, for example, how technology has evolved 
to go from 2D to this immersive experience into virtual reality and augmented reality. And the, the, it's not just about the recreation, but we now, we feel like the technology have reached the maturity to use this type of experiences for business purposes too. Think about it, in the past, to run this agile software development team, the conditions were to be particularly successful, you need to have dedicated and collocated teams. Well, how many people are still working together and collocated today? Our staff has been working remotely for more than a year and a half. We used to have work from everywhere policies before COVID even happened. So we are looking for now not to digitize the old process. We used to do scrums like this. We used to do you know, sticky notes or sorting session like this. But if we were to start fresh, to reinvent how people with cross-functional team collaborate all over the world and on different time zones, how can we use technology to humanize this interaction and to create people to generate more efficiency, more satisfaction, faster speed to market? So as opposed to looking into the old way that was the analog way, the in-person way, and try to digitize it, if you are unbound, unconstrained, like our head of technology, Ben, was saying, if there are no boundaries, how would you start creating with that amazing experience in this integrated XR virtual reality and augmented reality environments. I think that is the future. I love it. And it really is incredible what you say that if you had no boundaries, what would you do? It's almost like talking to a young man or woman and saying to them in their life, if you had no boundaries in your life, what would you do? And it's very powerful. It's very empowering. I know that you're a uh, you're an expert in what you do. I love the balance that you bring. I love the fact that you're very interested in the journeys and the experiences of your customers, clients, because you always put the clients first at equilibrium. So you really have, have, have put together a world-class team of world-class experts that are able to provide product design and software development in a very powerful way powerful way. You're an expert at user experience design. You understand technology and integrations. You understand digital strategies for your clients. You've got great uh, case studies and you understand that technology is rapidly moving. And that's why you like to get those MVP outs uh, for your clients, the minimal viable product. You fail early so you learn you reach out to the clients and you give them the opportunity to share back with you what you can improve on to make it better for your customers. I know they love that. And that's why you have such a great reputation, Adrian. And I also love your, your idea about going into the Ikea store, about what that's like when you put out the MVP. It just makes all the sense in the world. I know this is going to resonate a great deal with so many people watching the show so Adrian, I know you've only cut out a certain amount of time, but I just wanted to ask one last question. And what is your why? What makes Adrian Mose wake up in the morning? What gets you going? What is the why for your life? Love the question. The idea of continuous improvement and the idea of leaving the world a better place is something that is a personal value that I have brought in with me into the company's culture too. We focus on purposeful impact and we are looking to craft this remarkable experiences to solve these really complex problems that enrich people's lives. That was something that I got inspired from my time when I used to work for Nintendo and how Nintendo have chosen out of all the games that they can build, instead of focusing on, I don't know, um, zombies and crime and nudity, and they focused on games that help people elevate. And, and they talk about um, make your brain bigger, uh, get smarter, learn music, learn how to become a surgeon. I love that concept about accelerating progress, making a positive impact on people's life. And the idea about bringing together these experts, cross-functional team 
to build not only an agile development, but an agile organization that has an impact on clients who have these progressive mindset and looking to use technology to build amazing experiences to differentiate and grow. I feel very thankful for having the opportunity to bring such a world-class team of colleagues together, working from all over the world, and also to work with amazing clients in Canada, United States, Latin America. I love it, Adrian. It makes all the sense in the world. The two words that really stick out in my head when I speak to you is purposeful, purposeful impact, purposeful impact. You mentioned it, and that's what you do. You do things on purpose in a very, very logical way to get your clients from point A to B to C to Z all the way through it. You've done it so successfully, and you make these strategic, purposeful action steps to make the best impact for your company at Equilibrium. It's absolutely unbelievable. I wanted to thank you so much for coming on the Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. It's been a true delight. I've waited a long time to get you on the show, and I hope I get you back very soon. Thank you so much, Andy. I really enjoy our conversation. I appreciate you taking the time to chat today. All the best.